Hey, Steven is here. Today we're gonna be putting two of the best smartphones on the planet to the test, iPhone 14 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. As a filmmaker, I'm all about that camera game, but we're not just stopping there. I'll be checking out everything these flagships have to offer and all in the name of finding the perfect phone both for creators and everyday users. Overall, both phones produce amazing image quality. However, each phone excels in different scenarios. So they're equally good, but they're not the same. So let's get into it and find out which of these phones is worth your hard earned cash. First thing I want to mention is that iPhone camera app does not offer any manual controls over your exposure or white balance or even focus. And if you wanna call that manual control, well, uh... on the other hand, the S23 Ultra has the full control of the camera settings right in the stock app. What's the big deal, you ask? Well, you see, maybe for a quick, here's my breakfast photo, other settings are good enough. However, if you want to take your photos more consciously, you always want to use manual controls. And for someone like me who makes a living filming and editing videos, this is huge. So here's the real problem from my experience that I faced. You see, I'm filming a cinematic scene with both of these phones. However, because I'm using the artificial source of light, for some reason the white balance on the iPhone went too warm and the image looks horrible. While on the S23 Ultra, I can just lock the white balance or set it to any value I want and get a stunning result. I think there is a chance that Apple will copy the S23 Ultra ability to have manual controls and serve it to the public as a breakthrough feature. But this is just my opinion and speculation. If you agree, right, Apple will copy this feature down below. Meanwhile, with the iPhone, I have to use a third-party paid app in order to have everything that S23 Ultra has right out of the box without any subscriptions. Now let's talk about the color science and sharpness of the cameras. Can you guys guess which one is which? You see the trend here? One camera gives more saturated results while the other one is more toned down. And FYI, I haven't edited anything here. These are the images straight from the phones. For some reason, Samsung produces a bit oversaturated photos to my taste, while the iPhone gives a bit more of a natural result. But once we go outdoors, in that case, the auto white balance on the S23 Ultra gives the photo a bit cooler temperature, while the iPhone has a bit of a green tint, which to my taste gives more pleasing result but this is just a matter of taste now if i put both photos in lightroom and do auto white balance correction for both phones in that case we can see that iphone has more neutral and natural results while the s23 ultra is a bit on the cooler temperature of spectrum and guys just so you understand this is not a deal breaker really it's just me pixel peeping and it's really an easy fix so maybe in the future updates samsung will fix it but as for now i can just adjust it in seconds without problems by myself now let's talk about about the telephoto cameras. And now guys, this is the perfect spot to show you the capabilities of the new telephoto zoom lens. So look here, this is the 0.6 super wide angle view. And I'm in photo mode, we go X1. This is the 200 megapixel mode, but this is not why we're here, let's be honest. Then we go 3X camera, well, it's still relatively close to us, but then we go to a super telephoto lens and it's so much closer already, but we can go even further than this. So we can go 30X. This is the digital crop. It's obviously not as good as if we had a proper optical zoom, but still it's good enough to get closer to the subject. So let's take a shot here at 30X. And we can go even closer 100X. And this is just ridiculous let me take a shot the quality isn't that good let's be honest at 100x it's just yeah it's not usable image quality at 100x but it's just good enough to see what's out there in the distance it's not for printing it's definitely not for posting this image or editing because let's be honest have a look you think somebody is gonna enjoy this quality I don't think so but just to show the capabilities of how far you can reach with this lens this is awesome and this is for comparison the zoom capabilities of the iPhone 14 Pro this is the 0.5 lens x1 2x which is a digital crop as well and then we go 3x telephoto lens and now we get closer so this is maximum of the iPhone 14 Pro 15x zoom versus 100x let's take a shot 
Yeah, you see it's so grainy. It's definitely not as close as on the Samsung because they have different optics, they have different cameras, but it's still decent, I think, because of the artificial enhancement. Keep in mind, this Samsung can become better and better with new firmware updates. Maybe they can switch a little bit, adjust the algorithm and make the post-processing of the photos a little bit better so it can perform better in low light. Because guys, to be honest, what I noticed about this telephoto lens needs a lot of light right now, even though it's relatively bright right now. Yeah, it's sunset time, but still we have plenty of light but the image quality is a little bit too dark to my taste you can see the ev exposure is minus 1.7 and i had to boost my iso to 500 so long story short if we use telephoto cameras on both of these phones at their base value in that case they both produce really good results but s23 ultra has the edge here as it has better zoom reach and when you use it with enough of light then the results are really good and i wouldn't say that the photos taken with the s23 ultra telephoto lens after 30x are usable for printing let's say but i found it's very useful just as pocket telescope to see what my eyes can reach okay so right now i'm filming on the wide angle lens and let's go to telephoto 10x whoa oh my god i can see this little boat and i can zoom even closer and see its name wow this is impressive like you know the other day i was in the bus and i wanted to see what my local butcher has in stock and the bus was passing by super quickly so i just took the phone out took this shot on the x1 camera and then this one on the 70x and you know what i had a really good steak that day or another case i found this pokemon card and i heard grown adults go crazy over them for unknown reason well i go crazy over the fact that this is x1 photo and this is the telephoto lens at 10x and this is 100x so i'd say this this is a perfect pocket size telescope for people with poor eyesight. Not that I have poor eyesight, but just so you know. So the S23 Ultra is definitely a winner when it comes to the telephoto lens. Keep in mind though, both of the phones do need a lot of light in order to get the best results. Now, if we talk about the image stabilization, then I think the iPhone is a bit better stabilizing its telephoto lens. But I think it's mostly because the reach isn't that big, so the overall shake is just less prominent on the iPhone. And let's address the elephant in the room. Thank you guys so much for helping me to reach 10,000 subscribers. I did not expect it to happen that quickly. It took me longer enough to get to 5,000 but then kind of snowballed from there if you're not subscribed yet hit the subscribe button and maybe one day this will turn into a 10 with an extra zero that would be really cool now both of these phones have marketing gimmicks which I do not really see any value for myself as a filmmaker let me know if you disagree with me but I'm gonna be critiquing both of the phones here not because I'm hating no but because I'm coming out of my personal experience I think that 8k on the s23 ultra is pure marketing and not worth it and same goes for the ProRes on the iPhone. It's a completely useless video container when it comes to mobile filmmaking. Yes, my cinema camera does have the ProRes setting too, but it's needed mostly for green screen work to better key out small details like hair and practically I never use it. So who at Apple thought it was a good idea to put that ProRes recording with enormous file sizes on 256 gigabytes mobile phone? I have no idea. And now as for the 8K, well, let's see. Okay, now I'm gonna be filming in 8K just so you guys understand if it's worth it or not and what you can actually do with the 8K footage. And again, look at this, the preview quality. Look at this, the preview quality is so low. It feels like it's, you know, 360p. It looks very bad. But once the recording is finished, okay, let's roll for a couple more seconds and I'll show you. But you see, once the recording is finished, it looks very detailed, it looks very nice. So I think it's pure marketing. Whenever someone says ProRes or 8K on mobile phones, well, I just roll my eyes. Not, not like in real life, but in my head I do like. But hey, this is just my opinion and go see what others think down in the comments below. No portrait mode. Well, clearly one is way better than the other one, at least for me before uploading it to YouTube. However, the margin of the difference is so big, so I'm sure even right now you guys can spot it after YouTube compression. You see, if we look closer, the camera A is more sharp, while the other one looks very mushy. Plus, image separation between the foreground and the background seems to be more precise on the A, which has happened to be the S23 Ultra. And honestly, I would expect the iPhone to do a better job in portrait mode because of the LiDAR sensor. But somehow, Samsung produces way better results when it comes down to how crisp the image is 
and the background separation, it just looks more precise to my taste. When we talk about the colors, then same here. The S23 Ultra gives more natural skin tones, while the iPhone 14 Pro leans towards green tint. And I noticed that even in my comparison between the iPhone 13 and 14 Pro, where the 13 Pro was given more natural results, while the 14 Pro had color science and white balance leaning towards green. So I think the S23 Ultra performs better in portrait mode for photos. For videos though, both the cinematic mode and portrait mode are more or less similar. Now here is an unpopular opinion. iPhone has a better macro and wide angle lens. Seriously, iPhone is ridiculous when it comes to macro capabilities. It can focus much closer than the S23 Ultra and the wide angle lens is a bit crisper for videos and it's more color neutral both for videos and photos while the S23 Ultra again goes into the cooler temperature. I'm sure this can be fixed with the firmware updates but as of right now it is what it is. And finally the main camera. I like both phones to be honest however if we take a shot of something closer to the camera like within a meter or so in that case the corners of the image on the S23 Ultra go a bit blurry while the iPhone 14 Pro has more even focus throughout the whole frame. Both phones have crazy high megapixel capabilities as well. Uh, and since iPhone came out a bit earlier last year, let me tell you that I used 48 megapixel mode only a couple of times and only when I filmed the iPhone 14 Pro review. Yeah, I haven't used it ever since. So for me, same goes for the S23 Ultra. While technically this is a very impressive that you can take a shot and then reframe or crop your image without losing much details or sharpness. I don't find myself using high megapixel mode very often. Now, if we talk about the video, well, here it's a very close race as well. Both are really good with decent image stabilization. The X1 cameras are also the ones you want to use for low light. So I'd say it's almost impossible to tell the difference if you use auto settings. However, the game changing feature is once again the manual mode on the S23 Ultra because it allows me to set up the white balance or the rest of the settings to make the image look even nicer. So they're like, the same level right here if we film it with auto settings but the manual controls take the Galaxy S23 Ultra a little bit higher in my rating. Also guys a lot of people ask me in the comments what is this grip I used in my previous test. This is the Sherpa Versatile grip. It's perfect for handheld filming or setting up your phone on a tripod. It also has a built-in selfie stick for portrait shots and talking about selfie camera. Okay so we got super lucky today guys. The sunset is here. I'm filming on the phone selfie camera in portrait mode. Let me know how it sounds and how it looks. Looks real like DSLR camera, to be honest. I set up my tripod over here. And yeah, I will be shooting this way, which is this way. Okay, let's start. Both phones are great, but I prefer the skin tones and colors from the S23 Ultra. But the iPhone captures more details and pores of your skin, where the S23 Ultra uses more processing of the image and making the skin look smoother and a bit lower quality. So it's just a personal preference, really, so to each their own. So which phone is a better choice? As you saw from my test in this video, S23 Ultra has crisper photos, better main and zoom camera, while the the iPhone has better wide angle lens and better colors in auto mode. So at the end of the day, both phones are excellent choices and it's great to see so much competition in the smartphone market. So whether you choose the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra or the iPhone 14 Pro, you're getting in both cases high quality phones that will serve you well for years to come. Just remember, it's not the phone but you who take the photo or film the video. So make sure you always think about composition, lighting and everything else before blaming the camera or YouTuber. And if you found this video entertaining or useful, make sure to watch the next one right here and I think it will be perfect for you. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye.